Hello guys and gals, welcome to a new tutorial. I know it's been a while, I'm sorry, uh, my laptop is slowly dying, um, which is making it hard for me to work, um, especially to record at a high frame rate. A lot of the time when I try to record right now, I pull about 12 frames. Um, I'm trying to work around it by like turning off literally every other background process while I'm working. Um, Hopefully this will come out okay. I really need a new computer, but being a student, I have negative money. Yay! <laughs> so it's probably going to be a while, so my tutorials are going to slow down a little bit for the time being, I'm afraid. So, what is that? Why have we got a target point? Go away. In today's tutorial, we are covering splines and how we can make a dynamic blueprint that will allow us to update uh, mesh along the spline. So let's uh, let's just hop right in. We're going to right click blueprint class actor, and I'm just going to call this because I, I have a pipe. I'm just going to call this pipe. <laughs> I've forgotten how to type. It's been so long. Underscore BP. We'll open this up. <coughs> And you'll notice I have this mesh here. I'm going to put this into a uh, a Google Drive for you guys so that you can follow along with the same mesh. It's just a, a really quick cylinder thrown together. Look at this. Look at this delay. See what I mean about my laptop just deciding it wants to hate me? It's probably going to uh, probably going to die. No, there we go. Uh, really quick thrown together. Just really basic. You know, just represents a pipe. Um, as you can see here, we've got the the wireframe, it's got quite a few polys in there because I want this to look quite smooth um, when we actually have this on top of our spline. So it's got a few more polys in there than it probably needs, but there you go. So inside the blueprint, add a component and we're going to find a spline. Boop! And there it is. We now have a spline and I'm actually just going to leave this called spline because there's no reason to, to do anything else with this. Um, I'm just going to leave it here. I'm going to leave it on the default scenery. It's just going to be right there. Spline. Okay. Now we're going to head into the construct script. And the reason we're going to do this in the construct script is so that we can see anything in editor that we change. So we'll be able to see a preview of this before pressing the play button. <coughs> Excuse me. So what are we going to do? Spline. Drag this out so we get the spline. And then from this we are going to get number of spline points. And this is going to be the basis of how we build our actual mesh. Now, from this, we're going to minus, and what we're going to take away is two, because we do not want the end point and the start point. We just want all the points in between those two. So we're going to be removing those two from the calculation. And what we're going to then do is we are going to for each loop from the construct pin and the number of spline points here we're going to make array plug this array in do we want a for each loop or do we just want a loop we just want a for loop there we are we want a for loop and get rid of the make array for loop, last index is going to be the minus, the first index is just going to be zero. And there we are. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get location, actually, I'm not doing it from here, from spline, get location and tangent at spline, at spline, spline point. We're going to leave this as local and we're going to actually get a second one of these because one's going to act as our start point and one's going to act as our end point. So plug the spline into that one as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to take index and plug the index into the first. And then we're going to take the index plus one and plug that into here. Ta da! like so. There we go. Now from the loop body we are going to add spline mesh component 
And with this selected, we now can choose a static mesh. So we're going to choose the pipe or whatever you want to put it in here. There it is. The forward axis, we're going to set this to Y. There we are. And we can now leave that alone. The return value, attach to component. And the parent is going to be the default seam root. There we are. We're going to leave all this to default as keep relative. And then what we're going to do is set start and set start and end. We need to turn off context sensitive for that. And the boink, the spline is going to do the no, it's not. I'm putting the spline in there. We're taking the return value of the spline mesh component, plugging that into the target, and then the start position is going to be from this guy here that's just directly from the loop without the add is going to be the start position and the tangent is going to be the start tangent. The second one is going into the end position and the end tangent like that. We'll compile this real quick and now what we're going to do is drag one of these into the level and you can see that we've got a pipe in there but our rotation is a little bit off so we're going to open this up we're going to change the forward axis to X and see how that looks. Nope, we want the Z for this one. Z. Come on. There we go. So depending on the way that your mesh is aligned, so I've got this standing up, uh, so Z is going to face it on its side uh, like that. Um, we which is nice. Uh, depending on your mesh, you'll just have to change that. That's the only thing that you really need to change, depending on your mesh, is inside the spline mesh component, change the forward axis. So now, if all is well, we can grab the spline point, and if we were to hold Alt and drag, we get another spline point, and you can see it's added another mesh. You see how it's done that? Now we can grab this point here, and we can maybe turn this to curve this upwards. And you can see how that's immediately made this curved because of the the additional polys that I've got inside this mesh. And I can just continue to make more of these. Whoa, he's a bit of a freaky looking fella, isn't he? See, here you really want to avoid any sort of turns that will make the uh, make the spline a very very. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, distorted. You don't want any, any distorted kind of turns. I mean, we can still have a turn in here somewhere but we're going to need to actually turn it properly using these points. So you can consider these anchor points to be the same kind of thing as paths in Photoshop whereas moving these will determine the sharpness of the bend. You see here we've, we've changed the, the direction and how sharp that is. And also how it reacts to the other point. So we can now take these and we can just create some really, really rapid splines uh, with meshes on, which are really, really cool. You could do this for wires, pipes, I suppose things like tree branches, vines, lots and lots of different things. But you can see how easy that is to set up and how simple it actually is to do uh, once you know how. So we'll head back into the blueprint once more, just to quickly show that. So all we're doing is from the spline, getting the number of points, removing two because we don't really need the start and end to make any more meshes. We only want the, the points in between that. So you see, it's not building on this point and on this point, it's building points between that, on the lines between the two points rather than the points themselves, otherwise we'd probably get another mesh here that we can't control with a point and a mesh here that we couldn't control with a point. And then we're just making sure that we're using the actual amount of things being entered in here to get a start and an end point. And we're adding a mesh. Really, really simple. 
very, very effective and really fun to play with. So I hope that helps you guys. I hope that's something that you guys can use. Um, just heard somebody shouting. Yep, one of my housemates is singing. He's going to be embarrassed uh, if he hears himself on this. Ha 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 ha. Uh, hopefully that's something that you guys can use. Uh, I'm sorry about the delay between videos, but as I say, my computer is slowly deciding to die. Uh, so until I get another one, the amount of videos I can make is going to be unfortunately reduced. Uh, just because trying to get things to work is too stressful around everything else um, that I have to do. Um, so there you go. Spline meshes and really really rapid creation of them. I mean I'm just gonna look at this. I can't help myself. I just can't help myself at uh, pipe underscore mm. I'm just gonna stick a colour on it just because I don't like that that, that nasty uh, it's gonna be red. That's not red. That's red. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yay. Oop, we don't want metallic. Uh, spec rather we want roughness and we want this to be maybe two and we'll put this up to one there we go see now this is just see this it's taking forever it's killing my laptop uh it is a shame oh we don't even have a, a material slot on this i didn't bother to give it one oh uh, give it a material slot Throw this bad boy in there. Or I would if I hadn't minimized this window like that. There we are. Because why not? Let's save that. So yay, this will eventually update itself. So yeah, I hope you guys can use that. Uh, I'm sorry about the lack of videos, uh, but it's beyond my control for now. As usual, my Twitter is in the description. As is the... Ooh, look at that nice red shiny shiny goodness. <laughs> As is the um, link to my Discord uh, server and my Patreon as well, and the Google link to get the, the static mesh, um, just so that you can follow along with the exact mesh that I've used here, just to you know save you guys any kind of uh, confusions that you might have. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.